Greetings, esteemed viewer. I am Catfan1610, and can you guess what I'm not wearing? Too late, time's up. If your answer was anything other than pants, you're a damn fool. Why am I not wearing pants? Well, because I recently saw this fantastic movie, and I've just oogered in my chakras. <laughs> So, Guardians of the Galaxy, if you can't tell from that introduction, I enjoyed the movie. It was pretty good. Before I get into that though, can we just stop and appreciate the fact that Guardians of the Galaxy has become a movie? Guardians of the Galaxy! Alright, I'm a huge comic book fan, and even I don't know that much about Guardians of the Galaxy. About 80% of this movie was new to me. So, blah. That was exciting to do. I mean, it's not like Winter Soldier where I went in knowing the twist and knowing pretty much what was going to happen. I mean, the S.H.I.E.L.D. twist was exciting, but aside from that, I knew what was going on in Winter Soldier. This movie was entirely new. It's also worth noting that this is the first movie since Captain America the First Avenger that we've had new characters introduced to the MCU. I mean, obviously there were the side characters like Falcon, but I mean main characters. Alright, so let's talk about the bad a little bit first before we get into the good. The bad! Most people have already said that Ronan the Accuser is kind of bland, and they compare him to Malik Heath from Thor the Dark World. I respectfully disagree. I don't think Ronan is anywhere near as bland as Malik Heath in Thor the Dark World. He's not incredibly characterized, but he's still got more of a characterization than Malik Heath, and he does more than Malik Heath, but he's still one of the negatives bringing the movie down a bit. He's, he's not the Winter Soldier or Loki, okay? As well as that, you've got a lot of things that just happen coincidentally, which some people might think of as a bad thing. Not me, because I like the plot of this movie. It's a fun plot, and if coincidences need to happen to get you from point A to point B, then who cares? Let's watch those coincidences unfold. Another negative for the movie was Glenn Close as Nova Prime. Not that she herself is a negative, but more, I don't understand why Glenn Close is Nova Prime. I mean, she's just... Did Glenn Close want to be in a Marvel movie? Is that why she's here? I don't know. And yes, there is a post credit scene. It's not that impressive. I wasn't that impressed by that. But still, stay to watch it. You might like it. It just didn't mean much to me. On to the good! Everything else in this movie. Obviously, we have to talk about the characters, and the Guardians are all played fantastically. I feel like James Gunn, who was the director, sort of looked at these actors and said, you know what, this is what you're good at, let's bring it out of you. Because he really does get the best performance he can out of these characters. Chris Pratt is a pretty decent actor already, and he plays a great role as Peter Quill, aka Star-Lord. Zoe Saldana plays a pretty fantastic Gamora. Tell you what, Bradley Cooper and Vin Diesel as Rocket and Groot steal the movie. I mean, you would be amazed how these CGI characters that are the most crazy characters that have been shown in a Marvel movie so far steal this movie. Especially Groot, who can only say those three words. I am Groot. Like, how much he manages to get across with those is just amazing. But I feel like the best example here is Dave Bautista as Drax the Destroyer. Bautista has gone on record and said, I'm not the best actor, you know, but I had fun with the role, and you can tell that. I mean, they didn't give him anything really huge emotionally to do. Instead, they played off of Bautista's strengths. So we end up with Drax as a serious but fun character that somehow paradoxically makes sense. You've got to see it to, to know what I'm talking about because I don't want to spoil anything for you. And of course I'm going to talk about the music because it's a movie and I love movie music. Unlike other Marvel films where the soundtracks have been entirely score, this movie uses a lot of 80s pop as its score. It has less score and more soundtrack, which, you know, was actually pretty good. It was well done. It's all fed to us through Peter Quill's Walkman, which is sort of a plot device and sort of not. You'll see what I'm talking about when you see the movie, because you really should see this movie. Other exciting thing, while it doesn't tie into the events that are happening back on Earth in the MCU, it does build this universe a fair bit. We get to see the Celestials, we get to see some other things. Cosmic Marvel has been opened, and if this movie does well, we're gonna see a whole lot more of it, and I'm so excited to see Cosmic Marvel on the screen. Overall, I thought it was a good movie. I didn't like it as much as Iron Man 3 or Captain America The Winter Soldier, but guess what? I loved those movies. Those movies were amazing in my opinion. I still like it more than I liked Thor The Dark World, and I liked Thor The Dark World. 
So this is high praise coming from me. I would probably rate this movie a B plus or an A minus, one of those. Get your ass out there and see it. Like, right, right, right now. Because I can't stand- I need to wash the oogers out of my chuckers. I need to go and do laundry now because of this movie. Alright, so thoughts, opinions, questions, anything else? Comments down there, please. Give them and I will try to respond. If I don't respond, it means that I don't like you. I'm sorry, that's just the way things are. Okay, bye.